probably look like crazy aliens to them and, and they do to us as well, like little fuzzy things. So I think it's just humorous every time we see them for the first time. So we're here at Lawrence Energy Center where we've got a nesting box up here on a perch. Uh, we've got nesting boxes with falcons and owls and other birds all throughout our service area right now. If you've seen the TGO uh, Falcon Cam, you know that there are three eggs up there right now. And we wanted to actually talk about why we Evergy actually has an avian protection program. So here I've got with me our wildlife biologist, Eric, and we're gonna actually just talk to him about our avian protection program. Hey Eric, how's it going? Pretty good, how about you? All right, all right. So what, what, what is the avian protection program and why does Evergy have one? Why is it important for us to participate in this program? Sure, so by the very nature of our business, the vast majority of our equipment's outside, right? So we have power lines, transformers, substations, power plants like here today. And so a lot of times there's just a great opportunity for birds and other wildlife to interact with our equipment. And oftentimes, it's a harmless interaction, whether they're just perched or resting or hiding somewhere. But there's some, sometimes that there's high energy, high voltage, and that, that's when the issues come arise, especially with birds that are larger birds, hawks, eagles, and owls, that oftentimes you see perched on our power poles and power lines. And so that's, um, we're one of about 70 uh, companies across the U.S. that are part of the Avian Power Line Interaction Committee. And as a result of that, we've developed an avian protection plan and a program to ensure that all of our equipment throughout our territory is avian safe, or, and we do find issues, we go and try to retrofit and uh, fix those problems. Okay. So right now, we, we know, especially at TGL, we've got uh, eggs that, are, uh, that have been laid. Sure. We know that there's gonna be a process over the course of the next eight to 10 weeks where they hatch. Uh, and we ban them. Can you walk us through what's happening now and, 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 and what's going to happen over the course of this period of time? Sure. So these are peregrine falcons. Um, like you said, they're pretty well known. They're, they're movie stars for us downtown Topeka. And so typically peregrine falcons will come back to their nesting territory uh, end of February, early March, um, kind of getting established. They'll go in and actually attend to the nest, move rocks around, remove trash from the previous year or bones, other stuff like that. And so about the end of March, uh, early April, they'll start settling in and start laying eggs. And that's what happened at our Topeka Geo. Um, we have three, three eggs currently, and she laid those over a course of about a week and a half. Mm -hmm. And so I noticed the other day that she's starting to settle in and starting to incubate the eggs. And so not just the female, but also the male, they'll take turns moving back and forth, going out to feeding and coming back and, and keeping those eggs warm. And so the incubation period lasts about 30 days. Yep. Um, and so at that time, the eggs maybe won't all hatch at one time, but over the course of two or three days. Um, and one of the interesting things about that is we have access to that nest. So we work with a lot of state and federal wildlife officials. And so we'll actually go in about 20 days after hatching. Um, it's kind of the perfect time to go into the box, grab the young chicks, and then we can actually put identification bands on them. Okay. And so I know you've been involved with that in the past and probably our customers have seen it as well. Um, but we try to do that at almost every nest we have across uh, Kansas and Missouri that we manage. Okay, one of my favorite pieces and parts of this process is you see the, uh, the chick hatch and it's really, really small. Yeah. And then you see it grow, you know, as it's being fed over the course of a couple, uh, a couple of weeks. What's happening during that space? Why do they grow so quickly? Yeah, they're just that type of animal, right? They're, you know, as, as humans, we were babied as, as little kids. Our, take, our, our parents take care of us up to late teens, right? That doesn't happen in the bird world. Um, you have a very limited opportunity to get, to get the food you need. Both the male and the female will bring food back to the chicks. They grow tremendously fast. And once they take that first leap off those high, high perches, um, they'll hang around the parents for maybe two or three more weeks, but then at that time they're they're fully feathered, almost fully grown, and they're going to start testing out testing out the waters, looking for other opportunities to move away. Eric, so one final question: uh, What's been your favorite memory as you've worked with with falcons and birds on our nesting boxes that are on our properties? Yeah, I'd have to I'd have to say it's probably not one single memory. I think it's just the fact that every time we go into a nest box and we're ready to ban the new chicks from that that particular year that you open the box and it's their first sight of us 
is just as surprising as we first see them. <laughs> um, honestly, we probably look like crazy aliens to them, and, and they do to us as well, like little fuzzy things. So I think it's just humorous every time we see them for the first time, um, and after hopefully been banned them pretty shortly after that. I'm looking forward to that that moment at the end of May, end of June. Uh, I'm Damon, this is Eric with Evergy. Evergy, spreading good energy in the communities we love and serve.